Welcome to Leadership Forward, where you'll meet Arizonans with innovative answers to our state's greatest challenges. I'm Don Wallace from the Arizona Center for Civic Leadership at the Flint Foundation. Hi, welcome to the podcast. Today we'll be discussing the health and well being of Black women in Arizona. This is a particularly important topic for me as a woman and as a mother. Black women experience the highest maternal and infant mortality rates in the nation. In 2020, the National Center for Health Statistics reported that the mortality rate for Black women was 55.3 deaths per 100,000 live births. Black women are more likely than white women to have C-sections, to have their pain minimized or ignored, to report mistreatment, and have stillbirths. So why do these disparities exist and what can we do to improve the health of Black women and children in Arizona? To talk with us about this very important topic, we welcome Taniqua Broughton, the founding director of the State of Black Arizona. Welcome to Leadership Forward for a Better Arizona. Oh, thank you, Don, for the invitation and the ability to talk about the work that the State of Black Arizona has been doing in the last few years. Well, we appreciate having you here. So this data is really shocking. This data is very shocking. And um, it's hard to actually do this work each time you see the data and it's not faring better, it's actually getting worse. Um, And I know you shared early about um, the maternal mortality rates, uh, but it is even worse when you think about what is happening in South Phoenix. So uh, across the state, the percentages, I think, reflect uh, a little less than 5%, around 4%. But in South Phoenix, when we talk about uh, maternal um, infant mortality rates, it is unfortunately 14%. And so there are organizations um, like Healthy Start, South Phoenix, who are working to oversee that. But the challenges um, just everywhere across our state are challenging. So this is work that you've been doing for many years now. In fact, in 2021, the state of Black Arizona released a report, um, the health and well-being of Black girls and women in Arizona. And there was a lot of research, not only about the maternal and infant Uh, mortality rates, but also in general, the health of Black women in in Arizona. Um, In it, um, the data sort of downplayed the notion of genetics and lifestyle as a major contributor for these these disparities. In fact, started the conversation around social determinants of health. So can you tell us a little bit about what that means in this context? And, you know, what what does it reveal in terms of the gaps and opportunities available for Black women and their children? Yeah, thank you for that question. And, um, you know, I want to respond to that question, but I also want to make sure that the reflection of my answers um, as the leadership of the organization is really a summary of the data and the research of our experts uh, from the report. So not an expert on it, but I am summarizing a lot of what we have talked about, what we have spent time with, um, and how I would say we view things outwardly to really make sure everyone understands that. So that report was uh, commissioned by the African American Women's Giving and Empowerment Circle. So they came to us and said, we would like for you to do this report. This is an area of interest for us. And so um, in looking at that, we did really dive into the social determinants of health. And for many of us who may know or may not know what that is, social determinants of health really is about looking at how it determines economic stability, health care, and quality Um as well as the ability to understand how someone can navigate their environment and et cetera. And so the report is very revealing because it shows that we really have an uphill battle on a number of different issues from birth to death. When we look at it in Arizona, it also is very different. There are a few comparisons nationally, but we still have our own trends that are showing up um, in our in our state very uniquely. What you may think is happening uh, for Black women in another state may be different um, in Arizona. And so I think 
understanding that the data and research is telling us a story, um, we need to actually pay attention to what the data may be telling us or not telling us, as well as the lived experiences that compare or don't compare to it to do a better job around the systems changes for Black women um, and infants in, in Arizona. What are some of those unique unique factors that are Arizona uh, specific rather than part of a national trend? Yeah. So one of the things I think everybody first was like, what was the leading cause uh, of death? And I think the first thing people was like, is what's well, cancer? Um, but if you look in the report, it actually is diabetes. Um, and so that uh, heart disease, that was really, I think, hard for people to be like, oh, well, we thought it was this one thing. But when you start looking at um social determinants of health, and we're talking about how people are living, uh, their social and emotional health, their mental health, those things were very challenged in some of the data we were collecting. And unfortunately, we weren't able to share it very specifically in the report around privacy concerns because the numbers were not that high. We had a challenge around being able to get data in some of those areas. And so you just want to make sure that you're not putting out anything that is suppressed or challenged in that. But we know that from the stories that are shared uh, from the work that is being done by practitioners, there is a lot that needs to be done in this space. So in the report, there was a a particularly heartbreaking sort of correlation between uh, individual trauma and the disproportionately high instances of chronic illnesses like diabetes, like breast cancer. Um, That's a pretty shocking statistic in Arizona, um, the black women have the highest uh, rates of breast cancer in in the state uh, amongst different um, subgroups of women. So can you talk a little bit about the, the work and research around the connection between ACEs, trauma, and the incidence of sort of uh, uh, the hel- the unhealthy, uh, you know, circumstances that correlate out of that. Yeah. You know, I'm going to share it from my perspective because I think um, our experts will would answer this um, probably a little bit differently and with more in-depth experience. But what I would say is the correlation of what you saw in the report um, is that our challenges of what is happening from the birth of a child um, is almost carried throughout their entire life. And so if they're not getting the support and needs and that care early on, and then you become a young woman to then becoming a woman who is caring for their family, who generally then puts your family first in care and not taking care of your your own needs, it may compound some of these issues that are being created. So um, what I would say to what I saw in the when I what I saw in our report and in the conversations of listening is that in Arizona we have an issue around ACEs. And it's not just African-American youth. Our kids are experiencing trauma much more than most kids. So that in itself is challenging. And why are there so many traumatic experiences happening in their childhood? So that's affecting them. Um, I think when we think about care, um, when we announced last month that we were going to work on a mother and infant in health in Arizona report. So many women came up to me to share with me their stories, mothers, inspiring mothers, and even single women talking about their interactions with healthcare providers and practitioners. Uh, And very daunting stories, stories that brought them to tears, stories that if they didn't get the care that they needed, they would not be standing here in front of me. Stories where they had to demand the service that they needed, stories where they had to research and really be almost their own doctor. And there are so many great people who are working. I think of Dr. Sharon Thompson, who has been a great educator of this and is in the report. But It just it's sad to hear the stories over and over again around women not getting the care that they need to be their best self uh, for themselves, but also for their family 
and, and their children. Well, so let's talk about the Black Maternal Infant Health Campaign that you are embarking on in April for the next year. Um, it's the, the the sort of the national week is April 11th through the 17th, but but this is this is a, a topic of significant um, priority for the state of Black Arizona. So tell tell us more about your campaign and what yeah. you're going to do. So again, I'm going to go back to the African American Women's Giving and, and Empowerment Circle because I think they understand that the work that we are doing when it comes to the data reports require action. And they want to constantly embark on that. What I didn't share earlier about is that when we did this health and well-being of Black girls and women report, um, they acted upon it by putting out um, a philanthropic um, ask. So they they did their, their giving for a year for proposals from organizations specifically to focus on the issues that were addressed um, within that report, which is great. And I think they want to go further, which is why um, we are moving forward with the campaign in January, they did a viewing of Aftershock, uh, Hulu's Aftershock documentary, which uh, documents stories of unfortunate um, maternal um, mortality challenges that have happened uh, in a particular uh, state, um, New York, and the fathers who told the stories about what happened to the mothers um, that that. Um, have their kids and how they are moving forward specifically without them uh, understanding that they could have had the care to still survive. Um, so with that, the state of Black Arizona was like, okay, it is time to move to the next step. So our campaign really is about a few things, building awareness, it's about activism, and to create a call to action around the initiative to amplify these improvements within the system. So, you know, it is about treatment, it's about access, uh, clinical measures, and the lived experiences of Black uh, mothers. So we just don't want it to be a data exchange. We really want to facilitate the understanding of the, the new data with an uh, equity framework. So we've kind of moved from, we understand some of the social determinants of health challenges, but now there's a framework that we think can dive a little bit deeper into to support some of those gaps. I think understand that cultural context um, and give an opportunity. So instead of just putting out the report, the campaign is about putting out a number of different white papers with videos and a social media uh, awareness around some of what this data means. So we um, are in the stage right now of solidifying our relationship with March of Dimes to utilize their Ignite Together campaign, which is um, a national equity framework, which has five different strategies. And so we want to embark on three of them with them for this campaign. Uh, one is dismantling racism and addressing um, unequal treatment. The second is increasing access to quality health care. And then the third one we want to utilize is safe and connected communities. So of the five, those three would really carry us through the next uh, um, year where we would put out these white papers and have conversations that would hopefully turn into a convening and an ability for people to actually um, give us their feedback and it could turn into a report as of next steps. So um, thank you for that. And thank you for this really important discussion. So you are my first guest on this podcast. I couldn't ask for a more amazing leader and human. Um, and I'm so blessed to have gotten to know you. Uh, you are a Flynn Brown Fellow. This is Leadership Forward. So we're going to talk a little bit about leadership. You are a Flynn Brown Fellow of 2013. Um, um, tell us about that experience for you and how it led you into the work that you're doing right now. Um, well, Flint Brown, I mean, you know this, Don. Uh, I I am always promoting. I actually just left a lunch and I was like, you need to apply for the Flint Brown program. But my story um, is very interesting in the fact that Flint Brown really helped, I think, platform my ability to have strength for leading the state of Black Arizona. So when I was in the program, I was actually 
um, leaving another nonprofit organization. And then I went through the program. And when I finished the program, uh, right before I finished the program, I was introduced to the organization and was asked to look at um, completing their volume four, uh, which was on arts and arts education. So in the process of um, doing that project and able to, to really secure um, some funds to keep me on, what I learned uh, from a high level in the Flint Brown program really helped me, I think, be a better leader and the and a and a real and a real founder, like taking the steps to say, okay, Taniqua, you can do this because now you got that policy piece. Now you understand the bigger picture of how the state works. You understand budget, you understand water, you understand, you know, access. And so um, for me, Flint Brown is a part of my journey. It's a, a staple to my leadership. I don't like to miss the conferences. I unfortunately missed my last conference, but I like going to our uh, alumni, our fellow conferences. I like to participate as many sessions as I can, um, always understanding uh what is the recap around um, the legislative session? I love that session. But I will say this, the network uh, is amazing because I have some real friends in there, but I have some colleagues that help lift me up as I lift them up. And Flint Brown has definitely changed my, my, my life to look that leadership and civic leadership is way beyond just what you think you should do in the community, but it is extending yourself to the place where every part of you being social, emotional, and engaged in the way that you didn't think you are is what you get out of that program. Thank you, Taniqua, for your continued leadership and your work helping people in our community. And um, to learn more or get involved in uh, the Black Maternal Infant Health Campaign, visit the State of Black Arizona website at stateofblackarizona.org. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. That wraps up this episode of Leadership Forward. You can find out more about the work of the Arizona Center for Civic Leadership at our website, azcivicleadership.org. 